I hate my life. It's broken. Every day, it hurts. I'm not getting anything from my family, so I try to get it from my patients. I know it's wrong, but who else do I have? Who else do you have to get what you need from? Nobody. But, uh, okay, I have you. But you, you can't give me what I need. So it's not your job. Can you tell me what you need? I don't, I don't need anything special. Just, just what, what everybody needs. Well, you have food, you have clothing, you have shelter. Well, sort of. I have a den with no other bears. Is that shelter? You need some other bears? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I miss them. You know what I'm talking about. I know you do. I do. I miss dinner, you know. I, I miss the after dinner. What do you do in Brooklyn between dinner and bedtime? Oh, sometimes I, I, I go to the local bar. They've got the soccer from England on. I, that's good. So, then I have, I have a drink. Oh, do you ever meet any women at the bar? I, I, I see them. I don't know if they see me. I'm like that. <laughs> that lonely guy in the uh, Edward Hopper paint and sitting at the bar. <laughs> Tell me about the women. Some of them are, are pretty, you know. Mm -hmm. They wear bracelets that, that jingle. They go outside to have a smoke. Mm. Like, my, like my patient, uh, Mia. I don't think you've mentioned Mia. She was a patient 20 years ago. She came back this year. She's, well, it's complicated. She's, she's a lawyer that works for the firm that's handling the deposition, the lawsuit. We had a conversation about the case, and then she came back as, as a patient. What do you mean, complicated? Complicated emotionally. But she's really smart, and she's, <laughs> she's funny. Challenging. Yeah, I think you could throw that one in there, yeah. She's also the kind of woman that, if she managed to work through her issues, she could conceivably be right for me. I, I'm not, not in love with her. But could see myself with somebody like her. You've cheered up just talking about her. Well, I am drawn to her, yeah. But after last year in Laura, I, I don't think I'm going to fall in love with another patient for a while. Oh, is that a relief? <laughs> 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 but is she in love with you? Is that why you mentioned her? No, I mentioned her because we're talking about things that I need. Mm -hmm. I need a woman. For sex. Is that what women think, that men really think that they want them just for sex? No, I was just asking you if you wanted sex. Of course I want sex. I'm not dead. Okay, well, then, good. That's something you need. That's our subject, what you need. So you need sex. I need fun. I need release. I need contact with another human. Despite what Paul says, he has already started courting Mia, at least unconsciously. Would such a relationship have a prayer? After all, Mia can be quite nettlesome, especially when it comes to men. I push men away. Look at Bennett and Andre. I mean, pick any letter in the alphabet. I've, I've sent them packing. I'm like a knife in your neck. It feels good when it's gone. Right? Yet Paul is attracted to her as he was to Kate, his ex-wife, 
who according to their son Ian could be highly critical too. I can understand how after 23 years of marriage you'd get tired of stuff. All the nagging and all those long suffering silent but deadly looks that she gives you when you let her down. I mean she does it to Rosie, to me. Everything from some tone you're using in your voice to leaving a wet towel on the bed. There are issues that you have with her. They're not necessarily mine. Well, you think it's so different with you? You don't feel like she's always just disappointed or something? I mean, the woman has got a martyr complex. I don't know how you could deal with it. When he finds himself in trouble, Paul also runs to Gina, a woman who has been highly critical of him in the past. When I walked through the door, I felt that you looked at me with glee. And you thought, oh, here he comes again. Paul, the failure. And I thought, she's been sitting here like a sleepy old spider, just waiting, waiting for something like this to happen. Look at you. You've woken up. You're, you're full of life. Such a pattern of behavior would suggest that Paul's mother was highly critical of him, too which is indicated by a recurring dream. What happens in yours? Well, there's one I've, I've had consistently since I was a kid. I'm sitting in this rocking chair and I'm rocking back and forward. And every time I go to get off, I can't get off and the chair keeps rocking back and forward. And my, my mother is calling me from upstairs and I, I, I'm trying to get out of the chair but I, I just can't let go. <sighs> what do you think it means? I think it means that uh, maybe that I am scared that I'm going to disappoint my mother, that I'm not going to be there for her. Mia and Paul were both scarred by childhood relationships that have given rise to hurtful pathogenic beliefs which have shaped their subsequent relationships with members of the opposite sex. Pathogenic beliefs subvert relationships by distorting reality. It is really too early to tell whether Mia and Paul will be able to see past the distortions to form a relationship based on who each truly is and can be.